think I pulled out. What a ridiculous sounding way to say that. Like a stay at home dad. Shh, shh, poopies. What is going on there? I want to spend time with family. <laughs> they were trash. Good morning. And today we're embracing the chaos of the synchronized shoelace orchestra. Wow. That's not what we're doing today. That's not at all what we're doing today. What we're doing today. First thing. Um, I, I guess the meeting I had with Restore the Wellness Place, rescheduled to today. So I'll go and do that. Hopefully that brings out something. I really prefer going into meetings with an agenda. Like it seems like such a massive waste of time to go to a meeting without knowing what to expect and without knowing what outcome you're looking for. I asked, but I didn't get any response. So also, the talent agency that I've been somewhat connecting with recently, uh, the main dude reached out last night and we have a meeting tomorrow. It's, it, I have a lot of questions that I still need to have answered about not necessarily how I fit into their network. Like what, what are things realistically going to look like for me? Now, let me give you some, a bit of background. This agency so far only manage tech creators. Okay. So bringing on me is a, is a huge difference to everything they have. Now I had my idea about how I could fit in with what they have going on. And I asked them what their idea was of how I would fit in. And they had the same idea obviously before I shared what mine was. So that's, that's a good, that's a good green flag. What a weird way to say it. Okay. So a nice little green flag to start with. And, but I still have questions like, where do I sit in the priority? Where I just read you the questions that I have. Um, How do this group go about obtaining potential deals? Within your current brand relation brand relationships, what's the desire for my content from them? Knowing how I fit with your existing talent, how will you pitch my content? How often are you expecting to pitch my content? Uno segundo, por favor, señor. And What rate would you pitch me at given your recent deals? Uh, given recent months, how many pitches would you have made for my content? And what do the next one to three months look like with odd right on your roster? And what does success look like with odd right? And really, I'm trying to get an understanding of where do I fit within what they already have going on? Because if I'm way down the totem pole and an often thought afterthought, then I'm not really going to get anything. And my expectations of what should come out of this are going to be higher than the reality like of what they're expecting to provide, which is, is, is not good on you know both sides of it. Cause then I'm frustrated. They feel like they're doing their role, but I'm frustrated and you know, it just doesn't match. And there isn't any, I was thinking about this last night when I was going to bloody hell, there's like 10 deer just on the side of the road. Uh, yeah, I was thinking about this last night when I was going to sleep. There's no expectation that I should be anywhere within their priority list. And there's no, there's no way that I should dictate where I sit in their priority. It's more understanding what their thought is so that I can understand it and decide if that is the right move for me and where I want to be rhyming. So good. So we'll see. I mean, the, the, so far there's been, you know, I've, I've had some really good stuff from them, but time will tell because I've spoken with so many different talent managers before that have just been absolute, like from what I've seen, absolute trash I just 
I don't want to get too deep into it. Uh, just, just not. Maybe they didn't meet my expectations. Maybe my expectations are too high. <laughs> Which got me thinking. I kind of want to make a list of things that I love about working with people and another list of things that I hate because a list of things that I hate, the top of that list is going to be people who are shit at replying to emails, like shit at communication. That goes right at the top. So you know the, the past few days have been a bit of a roller coaster, a roller coaster. And I was trying to work out like, well, I guess I, I understood this morning that I'm, I'm trying to do so many things and I've constantly come up with more ideas because none of the things that I'm doing, aside from view counts on TikTok, none of the things are, seem to be getting me closer to where I want to be. And so I keep thinking about what do I need to adjust to get closer to that place? And do I need to keep adjusting things? Like, um, like it's a, it, to me, it's a very interesting topic on social media of depending what your goals are. Like I feel like I, I genuinely feel like I'm a very honest person. And I think that if anyone decided to, what's the word I'm looking for? To, if anyone were to look at me as a role model, I genuinely, I genuinely feel like it, it's not necessarily my goal, but if someone's looking for <coughs> a role model to help them through things that they're going through, then I would gladly be that. And that would make me, <clears throat> that would make me super happy. What the? <coughs> Sorry. Uh, what do I, what do I, where am I going with that? The role model thing. <coughs> the hell is in my throat. It's still there. <clears throat> uh, what am I trying to say? I I feel like I haven't built anything on TikTok for any kind of longevity. So when I see videos, I, I tell you what I, I I feel like I put a lot of thought and time and effort into <clears throat> um, I just I'm finding this so difficult to articulate. I feel like I put a lot of time and effort into trying to not trying to be someone different than I am, but trying to share things and do things that make that that may make someone to develop some kind of community, let's say. <clears throat> but I don't see anything. I see so few things that tell me, that give me positive indications that I'm somewhat successful of doing that. And I don't know if I'm just looking at the downsides of things. <clears throat> In terms of I'm not seeing many of the same people coming back video after video which tells me I'm not seeing someone who enjoys the video after video after video. Like I, I, I would, not that I deserve it, but based on where I've been trying to get, I would have expected more of that, right? To see the same people commenting, <clears throat> which of oh, the indication of that is 
that I'm not doing enough for people to want to be there for every video, right? And then you have other indicators, like a video that flops like you would not have seen before. <laughs> I think I've had my, last night, I had my biggest flop of what I thought was going to be one of my better videos. Huge flop. The TikTok, the uh, hand in lotion video that we put, that I redid yesterday and posted. It's been up for almost 24 hours now. 2,351 views. To me, that's, that's mental. But that is also an indication of... I haven't built anything where someone may see my face on TikTok and be like, oh, I love this guy's videos. I want to watch, I, I can't wait to see what happens in this one. Like, I can't wait to see what Oliver does. This, dude, this is so, it's so cringe to me talking about this, like, someone should want to watch what I do. It's so cringe talking about it, but I guess that's part of, that's part of being a, a, a content creator, someone who posts video online, post vi posts videos online. I want to create an experience for someone who enjoys it so much, they're excited for the next piece. It's not, it, I really don't feel that it's about me. I don't want someone to be like, oh, I, I love Oliver. Oliver's the coolest. Oliver's the best. I want more Oliver. It's, I love what Oliver does. I love the way he does it. And I enjoy the way he does it. I don't know if that, I don't know if that seems any different to you. Sorry, that was cut short. I, uh, it, it ended up going down a rabbit hole that I wasn't particularly wanting to talk about. I, it sounded more like a ramble and it seemed like a negative ramble and I've had enough of that of the last few days. We're, we're going positive, okay? We can talk about negative and the reality of it, but we're gonna talk about positive and start it off with, <laughs> I've come down to do, we've got like 40 minutes before I head out to this meeting and I've just, on my way down to the office, the way down to the office, literally downstairs. Uh, I've, I've, I get a Quora digest that comes into my email every day. And the topic is what subtle behavior makes a person more attractive? And I thought, oh, interesting. I wanna be more attractive because I'm already married and I wanna, you know, doesn't make any sense. Okay, anyway. It's essentially the, it tells a story of two guys that are talking to an uncle they haven't spoken to in a long time and the uncle is struggling to hold the conversation asking questions because he just doesn't know enough about the field these two guys are in. And one of the guys in the conversation sees that he's becoming like kind of awkward in the conversation because he doesn't know what to say, what questions to ask. So flips the question, flips the conversation around to asking questions about the guy's farm, which of course he is much more uh, knowledgeable about and able to talk more about. And I think <clears throat> it, I don't want to pick on something that's really good and say that I do this, I'm really good. But I think in conversation, Making someone out, uh, oh yeah, that was the point in this that brought me to this. You make the other person the center of attention and it makes them feel like, you know, within reason, but it makes them feel like they really enjoyed the conversation uh, and that they had a good conversation, even if they were just talking about them. Like you, <laughs> number of people I've spoken to and it's just one way communication, It's it's, let's say in my case, it's me just asking questions, making comments about things that they do and things in their life. And then like the whole time I know this and then you finish the conversation and they're like, I really enjoyed that conversation. That was really good. And I'm leaving the conversation like, good, I'm, I'm glad you enjoyed it. I actually think I'm, re I'm really glad that you enjoyed the conversation. Uh, but I wonder if the person realizes that they never engaged me in the conversation 
What a ridiculous sounding way to say that as if like I should be the important topic of the conversation. Obviously not, but a conversation should be both ways, right? Like there should be equal mutual interest. But sometimes there isn't, but if you're able to control the conversation in a way that allows the other person to talk about the things that they're interested in, they're gonna love the conversation and they're gonna love you. Trust. You know the other thing that I had this crazy epiphany about like a couple of days ago? There's way, there's way more to this, but it's very personal that I won't get into it. But I remember when Shay and I, so my wife, when we started dating, we were going for a couple of years and I found my passion, which was creating stuff. And a few years then into that, I remember having a conversation with Shay and being like, what, like, what are you interested in? What, what makes you tick? What do you love? And her response was like being a mum, being a parent. I was like, well, that's stupid because that's just something you get to do anyway. You just get to be a parent. And like, I'm the, the, I'm the idiot, right? Because now she is the best mother that I could imagine. And I am so lucky to be with someone whose, whose passion revolves around being a flipping amazing parent to our children. Like, excuse me, I'm talking the time that she spent, like, I couldn't do it. I don't think I could do being a parent, like a stay-at-home dad on a daily basis. It seems, uh, there are too many other things that I want to do. And I don't think I have the ability to just focus on that one thing. Like I'm not passionate enough about <laughs> being a dad. What a ridiculous thing to say. I'm not passionate about all the things that come with being a parent enough at this point in my life. Uh, that's, a, that's a crazy thing to say, isn't it? But I guess that's the reality of it. Goodness me. But she, I, I don't think to her it's sacrificing everything else. It's, I get to focus on this thing that I love. And she gets to do all of these things. I, I'm talking like the dedication it takes. Her and I, we've eaten eggs for breakfast now for the past nine months, right? Because she got like borderline pre -eclamped. She got borderline preeclamptic for the last pregnancy. And so this one, she really wanted to focus hard on um, eating the right foods. I promise you there's a point to this. Eating the right foods, eating healthily and doing all of these things to make sure that she can have the birth the way she wants it, which is at home. And all of that is not just, it's just not just for her the way she wants to do it, but she believes that that's going to be better for the bonding of the child and as a family, which I agree with. I've, I've bought into it. If it wasn't for Shay, I would have been like, oh yeah, just have the kid in the hospital. Like no biggie. And then there's things like the, I, w I wouldn't, I don't know if I'd call it working out, but she does her exercises twice a day after each meal like makes time for those, even though it's the treadmill we have is in our basement. It's freezing in the basement. Uh, being healthy with foods. Like we went to Texas Roadhouse the other night. I'm like, she loves those rolls. And I, who wouldn't, who doesn't love those rolls? And she's like, you know what? I'm gonna, I'm gonna limit myself to only one. I'm gonna have it at the end of my meal. What happens at the end of her meal? She wants it so badly, but she decides actually like she's mentally strong enough to overcome. I know it's just a roll, but when you haven't eaten like crappy good food for nine months, all you want to do is eat a roll. <laughs> and all the things that she's been through make me realize uh, the things that she puts herself through for this and does on a daily basis with our son 
makes me realize just how lucky I am and how I just couldn't see it a few years ago. You see it on social media. It's like a trend now that men want a conservative woman who is who wants to be the stay-at-home wife, who wants to be the stay-at-home mom, wants to raise their kids at home. Whereas like my parents' era generation was all like, you have to have something else about you than just being a mom, because just being a mom is nothing. And bearing in mind, my wife has had this idea before this shift that you see on social media of it being a desired thing to find a woman who is interested in this. Isn't it funny how things work their way around? Imagine if I was the type of person, fuck, I feel like I'm bringing it on to me now. I'm not taking any credit for this, but imagine if I was the type of person that loved everything about Shay and was like, no, like, no, you know what? Because I feel like at the time I did say that. I did say something along the lines of like, I don't feel like being a mum is like a passion you can like live for in life. But she was strong enough to essentially be like, fuck you. That's my passion. I want to do that. And I'm going to do that. I'm like, good for her. I've, I, we, her and I just had this conversation, so she knows what I've expressed, most of what I've expressed here. Um, but it's good to, to think through it. Yeah. Okay, well, I, I'm going to go to this meeting. Looking at, sorry, looking at the, uh, what's needing to be done today. Oh, actually, I squeezed in a lot for today. So pod vlog edit, got that done this morning. Two clips, which I think I'm going to narrow down to one. And then I have a couple of, I want to look at some of the cons, sorry, some of the brands and think of concepts that a, he's not a talent manager, he works on like, I guess like the brand side of things, but he's given me a list of all the brands that he has connections with, favorited ones that he thinks would have like budget to fit what I'm looking to do. And so now I'm going to, uh, I guess, organize the concepts that I've been thinking of to be able to send back to him. But first, I'm going to look at changing our internet provider because Google Fiber has been shit. Yes, this is the very first thing I'm doing having come back from that meeting. All right, so we set up this meeting before Christmas, okay? And it's now, today is the 4th of January. Yeah, we're extra video behind, but off ahead of ourselves. I'm... I'm on my way there. Bear in mind I'm going to a location that's further away to have this meeting with her after she bailed on me a couple of days ago, which is fine, right? Like, things happen. I'm oh, looking at the timestamp here. It's nine minutes to the meeting time. And she knows that I live further away. So we've set up this meeting. Yesterday I emailed asking what time... Like, sorry, to say, have you had, like, conversations with the powers that be about budget and all that kind of stuff? No response, okay? Nine minutes before this meeting, I get an email. I'll read it to you because this is, this is very nice. Morning, Oliver. So sorry, but I have to cancel our meeting. Just got done with a call from my higher-ups, and we aren't in a position to do a trade proposal. 
Greatest of apologies and hopefully we can work together in the future. This meeting has been set up for at least two weeks. Yeah, it's over the Christmas period, but perhaps I don't know if, if my expectations are too high for people. Like maybe I'm, I'm not saying that I'm the world's greatest, of course. I, I do take pride in trying to be professional. And I feel like so many people just just suck. In what world, here's, here's the, this, this situation. How do we deal with this situation differently? If I'm this lady, I'm not setting up a meeting immediately after a meeting where I talk through trade proposal, proposals and budgets and whatnot, because I have no idea what's gonna come after that meeting. I'm telling this person, I'm telling me, let's set this up for tomorrow or next week because I have to have these conversations and we'll see what comes out of those conversations because there's no point you driving here if there's no budget for it. I'm not going to reply just because, okay, trust me, I want to reply. <laughs> I want to be as petty as can be. <laughs> but I'm not going to do it. There's no, there's no point. Um, it's just, it's so frustrating. But did have a potential idea on the way. So I've been trying to figure out like, what do I do with thumbnails? Because I've realized that people aren't clicking on just screenshot thumbnails. While there's a trend moving towards screenshot thumbnails, people aren't just clicking on screenshot thumbnails because it doesn't capture their attention. So I thought, what if I take like old ad designs and try and see if there's some way that I can turn those into a style for a thumbnail? Here's what I'm thinking. Oliver, why was there a cut? Because it's so much easier to match the clips up when they're, they're starting at the same time. We have Sco, oh no, wait, Utopian Scholastic. Was that the note I made? Yeah. I think it's like, yeah, the Encarta 95. Encyclopedia of Science. What if I type in Utopian 90s design? Honestly, I thought this was something different in my mind from what it actually is. Okay, I did join a Facebook group a long time ago. Now, I remember seeing a guy's video about this. Let me bring up the group. It's <laughs> it's in my search from I don't know how like months and months ago on Facebook. It's it's like the third most recent search. Um, screen record. So this is a. I'm not sure how I make this work yet, but. This, I guess I'm trying to work through how to make it work. You have a background and then you have, the way I'm thinking, so obviously every part of this is something that's referenced in, this looks like a CD. So when I don't have things, but I have me, how do I do that for this? I'm looking at book covers mostly instead of just art. 
like this one. It's so basic. What if a thumbnail is just, it's, it's me cut out, white background with, with a bit of text. I quite like the Okay, let's make that as an example. Just see what it looks like, right? Let's do some experimenting. Bro, I want the covers. Maybe we look at like 90s design trends. Dog. Hello, dude. Come on in. Good news. Hi, dude. What are you doing? By the way, that thing, it's not a toilet seat. It is a toy that we bought for Ruger. Excuse me. Hi, dude. You sit in it and you can spin, but it's absolute trash. Like this, for example. Like a screenshot, sorry, a cutout of me, for example, some background, I don't know what that would be each time, and then just text, oh gosh. Hi, Duda. Should we just should we just see what AI can bring up if we're trying to copy this one, for example? Beta. I think I pulled out. God, what a grim. Hello, Duda. All right, new file. I should share my screen. What are you doing? Are you okay? <laughs> it looks like you've just had a drink and you've made my arm rest really wet. Thank you. Good girl. You're gonna, you're gonna keep going, are you? Okay, okay, cool. Oh gosh. I hate when you screen record and the, the touch bar. Oh, you just press the X. Okay, cool. Let's select, oh, we do duplicate. Select me, I guess. I guess we'll select that as well. No, it would just, I, I'm just experimenting, all right? Like, I don't know what I'm doing here, like most of life. Isn't it? Dude, dude, I chill. All right, then let's do a... New... That'll do, I guess. And we're gonna go with this area. And we're gonna say, so what happens in this video? I talk about shite. I think this was, the day just felt like shh, poopies. Edit 2.1, we did that. Pick up the 
decide how those What background should we put? Should we um, utopian scholastic? Uh, so we'll go photo realistic, high detail, utopian scholastic negativity. See what that brings up. Hmm. I'm not really sure what to make of this. What is going on there? Oh gosh. That is That one's I guess that is utopian from what it I don't know. Just like random bits put together. Like this has nothing to do with the video, does it? Let's look up. Um, 90s design trends. inspired by 90s graphic design trends. Yes. Okay, I think so the musical influence This isn't this isn't giving me any juices. Not going to lie. I was expecting more in that article. Look, do ads. Do you think we'll move to a world where? Let me start this off. People are starting to look at TikTok. It's just nowhere near as entertaining anymore. If you're not getting a TikTok shop video, you're getting some crappy ad that companies are just wasting so much money on. There's very little content being made by content creators that you see now. And I've seen a couple of people talking about the fact that they would prefer to pay for, for ad-free stuff. Even if that means playing, paying a dollar amount per month for a platform that just doesn't have any ads, which then the revenue share for the creators, sorry, there is a revenue share then for a creators that's actually fair. What type of design is this? So these are all fonts, aren't they? But what is the background? Oh God, that's what I, I think I want.
Do I? Is that what I want? I guess I'm trying to think, how do I be, how do I be different? There are so many thumbnail styles out there that, that don't look too edited. But I'm trying to think of something different. Because this... What if... Design trends that look like minimal effort. I don't think that's going to... If I don't get any good results from Google, I'll go to chat GPT. Yes, we have minimalism. This isn't, it's not what I'm looking for. Uh, graphic designs. I, I'm not looking for what will dominate 24, but maybe it'll give me some ideas. See that, very interesting. That is more like that kind of 90s design trend, isn't it? What is Adobe Sensei? Um, do I have Adobe Sensei in my plan? Probably not, but is it free? Adobe is machine learning and artificial intelligence. I guess I don't really understand what this is. So maybe Sensei is the name of their AI. I don't know if this makes any sense. The power of generative AI is coming to Sensei. Sense, yeah, inside all your favorite Adobe products. So Adobe product would be like Photoshop. You're saying Sensei is something that's inside of Photoshop? chewed off part of my mustache into my mouth. <laughs> Gross! So it looks like it just sits... Here's where I don't know what I don't know. Sorry, let's continue this article. Lacoste and Minecraft. This is that to me that's a crazy collab because why? I'm outside the loop. And so I'm thinking, 
what Minecraft user it is going to be into Lacoste. I mean, maybe they're looking for a new target audience, but who's playing Minecraft? Mostly kids. Scrapbook. Okay, definitely not maximalism. I have always liked that. Apple high contrast and bold typography. Don't like that. I like the scrapbooking idea. Utopian. Utopian social media. Scrapbooking. I accidentally put a slash in there. Didn't mean to. We'll see what it does. Oh, the other thing I meant to mention was about the uh, the meeting I was meant to have. Like I do, ap I appreciate being emailed beforehand, but based on the timing, may have just as well have just waited until I walk in the door. Yeah, that's going to be extremely awkward. But like, there's there's zero point in an email nine minutes before the meeting. That's worthless. That's like the reminder goes off on your phone that, oh shoot, I have this meeting. Oh, I'm not ready for it. What do I do? Because the default, is it a time of event or default 10 minutes before? Thinking about the Apple notification for calendar. Okay. I don't understand how this is social media, but Social media scrapbook, damn it. That's kind of cool. Like imagine how cool this would be if if YouTube, you could upload two thumbnails, one for uh, people who use normal mode on YouTube and the other people who use dark mode. And like, let's say you're using dark mode, this border is black, so it matches the rest of the screen. And your design actually overlaps on the black, so that it looks like it's overlapping onto YouTube. That's quite cool. What if, what if? I'm just gonna see what this looks like. Didn't mean to do new layer, this one, solid color. Let's do black. And then this, nope, this. What 
what am I doing? Minimize it? I don't really know. It kind of looks like I'm popping out at you, doesn't it? Let's see what I look like. I don't, I'm not sure how I feel about this one for long term because it's going to be annoying with adjusting the background. I don't need to resize this, do I? No, I should be doing this. I don't know, what should I be doing? How do I do this? A uh, mask? I don't know what, what? I want to cut out. Like that? Yes, but that isn't enough, is it? That's what I'm going for. I don't know, I quite like that. Because it keeps to the idea of just a screenshot. Okay, I guess. Doesn't look even. I don't know how. See what that looks like for a video. I'm gonna. I need to finish up the intro to the video, and then I'll upload it, and we'll see what it looks like on YouTube. And we'll also do it with a white, solid color, white, white, black. What's going on over there? What's going on up here? Is that just my hair that's... Dude. Okay, reverse the brushes, get this one out here. All right, quick bit of clean up, son. All right, I'm just, I need to finish working on the uh, pod vlog, just get the finished edits up on that. So I'll do that, upload, and then we'll see what this looks like on YouTube, okay? Yes. Yo, uh, I spent, <laughs> let's do that, most of the day today looking after my wife and Ruby. She's not feeling great. And it's at that time now where it's like, it could be any day. So if, I guess it's a good point to say, if I don't, if you don't see me, if you don't see an upload, I'll be back once we've had a second child, once my wife's been through having a second child. But let me tell you something that we're doing, that we're doing, that I'm doing right now, which I think is pretty cool. Of course, I think it's cool. Record. All right. So I just saw a video of, Earlier, I saw a video of the brand Amiri 
Am I right? I'm not sure. Um, and their marketing technique when they were going to sell was to find investors and then plant people that would just mention the brand name to them and have a couple of people do it. And then when it came time to being pitched, they knew, uh, they'd heard about the brand and obviously they were probably willing to be, or they were interested. Next one was hun the hundreds and they took their clothes to a store and told that who the store owner had never heard of them before. They gave their friends money and told them to just come in and buy the stuff. So pop back in the store and the store owner was like, oh my gosh, wow, like the stuff's been flying off the shelves. I can't keep it. Keep telling you about it, but like I need more. And then you have the, I think it was called Gas app. This one was really good. So they made Instagram pages for tons of high schools but marked them as private and then added every single person at that high school on Instagram. That would take so bloody long, geez. And then one day when the bell went and everyone was leaving class, I think for the end of school, they accepted everyone's request, for like, I don't know, follow back request. And the link in the bio was of course to the app so then everyone was downloading it and it became a huge thing because everyone was talking about it at the same time, not just like one person mentioning it. Anyway, that's brilliant. So I fed a few of those into ChatGPT and trying to define an innovative marketing strategy for this. <laughs> I just think, I think it would be cool to have something that's like leading up to I know but I, one of the ideas here has given me a really good idea um, was it that one okay so the first one here this was much better than the previous ones they were trash so essentially announcing this all as a big live event where I would be going live to do a side quest. So like teasing the date that's coming, uh, select a side quest like based on everyone's input. Um, next, that's real time challenges. I guess the, the whole point is to show the real me doing this stuff and if you know, you know, if people are, are hooked and enjoying the experience, then they can, you know, I can announce it multiple times throughout something that's live that everything will, like I do all TikTok. Yeah, I do most TikToks like this and it will be on the YouTube channel. So I asked for five more. I haven't really read through these yet, but here they are at a high level. Here we go, side quest challenges. Announce weekly side quest challenges on TikTok and other social media platforms. Challenge your audience to perform. Nope, don't like that. Character development polls. This got me thinking a little bit more. I haven't read any, read any of the ones before this or after this. Character development polls. I'm thinking... Before we... Conduct polls on TikTok to let your audience make key decisions about your character's actions. I like this a lot. Uh, sorry, I'm just trying to think about how I would do it. So essentially, it's like as if I was making this for a video and I have the audience, I, I imagine like I'd have to be on TikTok live. I have multiple options for each. And the audience can choose. Dude, how wild would it be to build a program that, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? 
I guess, adapts as different decisions are made at each point. So like this is one possible way to do it. But if I chose a different want, a different setup want, this would all look different. I, that would have to be AI because I can't just, I'm not that good at <laughs> coming up with ideas for stories. So that's one option that I quite like. But then, oh gosh. I'm just thinking about how many different parts of this can I have the viewer, well, I guess you, or yeah, you or whoever's on live. Which of these can they have a say in? Because if, Like, let's say there are two options for the setup once. If they choose option two, then the storyline is that. But what if, what if, what if the audience define the video? Like, take this all the way back. The audience define the video. And then they define what the flaw is, what my strength is. And then together we build out what the video looks like. Sounds difficult <laughs> for me. <laughs> I guess there would be people helping on the live. Hmm. That would be cool to do though, wouldn't it? That would be really cool to do. Just the, the trouble is, as people join and leave the chat, I'd have to keep explaining what each part does. So it would have to be like a setup event for people to come in and join. I like the idea of doing polls and sharing bits about myself that the viewer gets to pick. Viewer supported quests. Periodically allow your viewers to suggest and vote on side quests for you to undertake. Okay, so basically that. choose quests that resonate with your audience preferences and surprise them with your unscripted adventures. Show your appreciation by crediting the viewers who suggest the chosen quest. Live Q&A side quests. Host periodic live sessions. And I want to move into side quest subscriptions. So all these ideas are using TikTok to drive, which is good because that's where, the, that's where my audience is. I feel like it's kind of in a box of doing that. Give me 10 more and make them progressively more innovative. I should find, I should just search through marketing campaign ideas like the three I mentioned. Yeah, read into those, learn from those, and at least feed that back in to this conversation to give the AI more ideas, right? Okay, did we get more? Okay, here we go. Yeah, I feel like, so I'm, I'm looking at collaborative side quests. Wait, yeah, collaborative side quests. I quite like this idea. I could even start off pretty high level and be like, this is, like I explain all of this, what's gonna happen. 
and then I would like your input on like just making it better. You know, like what about what are uh, some like Easter eggs we can hide in this? What a certain, yeah, because like, I bet, I bet a lot of people have a lot more creativity than I do for these kind of things. That's quite a good idea. I quite like that. Dude, this is it's so cool, isn't it? Being able to just have this kind of back and forth with something that has all this knowledge. Yeah. It, it's not quite like having a chat with a person, but I like this a lot. Choose your path for side quests. Yeah, I like, that. I like that idea, but it's so difficult. Okay, the audience driven plot twist. Announce a specific side quest with a plot twist opportunity. Encourage the viewers to suggest plot twists. Oh. That's quite cool. Dude, that's so cool. Yeah, I don't think I'm at a place for someone to join in yet. Not that I feel like it has to be me, but create a, I, I would like to be able to pay that person for being in it. I know they would want to be, they may want to be in it, but I would like to pay them for their time as well. The time limited side quest challenge. Mm, yeah. While these are good ideas, they're not what I'm looking for. I'm looking for something I mean I could repeat. I mean I could do a couple of these, repeat them, see how they do. I like the ideas. They're just none of these hit me as being in the same caliber as the three examples. Real world collab. Side quest collab with other creators. Mm. I mean, yeah, it could do, but I thought it was going to be something different. A side quest marathon. No, dude, I, I want to spend time with family. <laughs> I don't, did I, did I say, I don't know if I told you at the beginning of this. Uh, Rugi was just in here and he pulled uh, this off the desk, ran it over to me and he's like trying to put it on his shirt because he's seen me walking around the house with it on. I, I, I'm going to call it a day for now, go and help Shay out again, hang out with Rugs, and I'm going to search up a load of, excuse me, a load of different marketing strategies like that. I don't know what I'm going to search or see what turns up. And then hope for, and either I can get some ideas or we can feed something in, but either way I'll share them with you and see what you think. And if you have any ideas, that would be sweet. Okay. I have a call tomorrow with, for now I'll just say agency guy. Uh, that's about midday. So I think before that. Okay. Oh, oh, that's right. Sorry. Apologizing for something that you have no idea that I would be apologizing for. The 
retention metrics came through for the hand in lotion videos, which is currently at 2,648 views over about 27 hours. So of course I looked at the metrics and then I have them here. So I, I pulled them in here earlier, but like if we compare something like average watch time, it's way lower, which seems seems very strange because when you look at the percentage that watch the full video, it's much higher. But then you look at things like. Oh, that's why. So here I'm, I'm looking at the three second and you'd say around 70%. So we're a bit lower there. And then I'm looking at 10 seconds and you can see it's considerably lower than any other video that has done well. Well, aside from this one, I don't know why this one has done well. That I think the, the curve on it, like ending at 23%. But then like, this video that doesn't make that doesn't make any sense whatsoever look at this highest average watch time highest percentage of watch full video at 3 seconds among the top 4 or 5 at 10 seconds way higher than the others and at the end way higher than the others. Do you, you just see how it just doesn't really make much sense, does it? I mean, comments may be low, but saves are silly high. It makes no, it doesn't make any sense, does it? I mean, this one, yeah. The reason for this one flopping makes sense. So I'm going to it's really annoying, but what can you do? You can't do anything. Tomorrow, I don't know if I'm going to film the, I, I can tell you, you know why I was bummed out earlier is because uh, with the meeting that got canceled, the previous chat we'd had was like intro. We talked about rates and stuff, and it was going to be that she was going to have conversations like ready for this meeting. And like she wouldn't have the meeting if there wasn't budget close to what I was asking for. And so going in, I'm like, cool, like it has to be something here. And I, I that's annoying, but it's more, it's so much more frustrating that I yeah, get an email, sorry, yeah, an email nine minutes before, as if like, you haven't just had the last two, three weeks to have these conversations. I don't, yeah, I don't, I don't get it. I think that's just, I think it just frustrates me, the unprofessionalism of others. <laughs> Look at me on my soapbox. Yeah, that, I think that's what it is. Um, yeah, like I'm not gonna get I'm not gonna get too deep into it. We're gonna we're gonna stay above it. We're gonna coast over it. It just feels like a lot of things are just are just going every way but the way that I want them to. Um, but we control everything that we can. <laughs> So mentally, I feel like I can control all of that just with the, the way I think and the releasing of chemicals. How broad is that? I don't know. That's the way I believe. I have not done any research into it. But what we're doing research in is these marketing things. So I'm going to do those. Uh, yeah, if I don't see you again, and the baby's not going to be here. I'll see you tomorrow.